CataractCoach.com. Pearls for left-handed surgeons. In which hand should you hold the FACO probe? And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't really matter. But there are some things to consider. So here's the eye beginning of the case. We're going to show you this video of a left-handed surgeon. So holding the keratome in the left hand, sitting superior, making that incision. A little short on the tunnel length for my flavor. Patient obviously has a real cataract. Looks like some nuclear component and some significant PSC or posterior subcapsular. Putting in the viscoelastic there, it looks like HPMC coating the cornea as well. Now, when you do cataract surgery, think about it. Which hand... For phaco chop, let's say, which hand's doing most of the work and most of the movement? It's the hand that's holding the chopper, right? Think about it. It's not the phaco probe hand, which is relatively stationary in the eye. It's the, it's the chopper hand. So now the surgeon's doing a rexus here, and look, the rexus isn't being done with, apparently, the right hand. So rexus is being done with the right hand, and the phaco probe is going to be held with the left hand. And this hammers home my point, that you really should be able to do surgery with either hand. You should be able to use the phaco probe in your right hand, if you're right-handed, but also your left hand, for those cases where it's more useful. And similarly, you should be able to do a capsular axis with both hands. If you are a beginning surgeon, and you're starting off doing phaco, you may want to try using the phaco probe in your non-dominant hand and then chopper in your dominant hand. Try that, do that in the wet lab, see what it feels like to you. If you have good dexterity with both hands and they're relatively equal, then I don't think it really makes a difference. So then in that case, you can use your right hand for the phaco probe, left hand for the chopper, vice versa, it doesn't really make a huge difference. But here the surgeon is having the phaco probe in the left hand, chopper in the right, and this works out obviously very, very well because most of the work, look at the movement. Most of the movement's being done by the chopper. The phaco probe's relatively still inside the eye. The chop technique and the main movement here is from the right hand. So this is a left-handed surgeon who has decided to hold the phaco probe in the left hand, but then use the chopper in the right. You could also have this as a right-handed surgeon who decides that, hey, I want to have the phaco probe in my non-dominant hand because it's not going to do much work, and I want to have the chopper on the right. But regardless, something you need to practice. And a good pearl I can tell you, especially if you're a younger surgeon or just starting off, you really need to use both hands very well. Use your non-dominant hand to do things like eating or brushing your teeth or shaving or whatever else you do. These fine motions, if you can do them with your non-dominant hand, that's going to go a long way in building up good dexterity. So if you're going to eat dinner and you're going to eat with both dominant and then also non-dominant hand, that's a great technique to really help get those pathways working. And one of the things I tell them is, for a young resident, try brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand. Does it feel strange? If it feels strange, then you need to get the dexterity of that non-dominant hand up to speed. And then you should be able to do cataract surgery with both hands. And that's helpful because think about this. Let's say you're a right-handed surgeon and you're sitting temporally and the patient needs an incision for the surgery, for the phaco, on the steep axis, which is at 30 degrees. Well, very easy to make it with your right hand. There's 30 degrees. If you need to make the incision at 150 degrees, well, just switch over and put the probe in your other hand. And so you'll be able to do surgery in both hands and you'll be able to help a wider range of patients. Now that incision has been enlarged quite a bit. Looks like a single piece PMA lens going on a non-foldable lens. And that incision is probably at least five millimeters wide. So in a case like this, I'd prefer that the tunnel length of that FACO incision is a little bit longer. And now just using the Simcoe cannula to get that lens in the capsule bag. And it looks like it's behind the rexus. And then sealing up the incision here, be very cautious. That's a very big incision to seal up without a suture. I'd feel more comfortable in this case placing a suture, but the end result here is obviously pretty good. Thanks for watching.